Hi. Now in this question, we're asked to find the general solution of the differential equation d2x by dt squared plus 5 times dx by dt plus 6x equals 2 cosine t minus sine t. So if this is a question you'd like to try, I'll give you a moment to pause the video do come back when ready and you can check your work solution with mine or you can just fast forward to the end and go straight to the answer. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. Well, first of all, what we've got to do is find the complementary function, which I'll just abbreviate here as CF for the complementary function. And to do that, we've got to work out what the auxiliary equation is. And the auxiliary equation then is just basically going to be, when we look at the co coefficients here, it's going to be m squared plus 5m plus 6 equals 0. And to solve this quadratic equation, this particular one factorizes. So we've got two brackets. In one we've got m plus 3, and then we've got multiplied by m plus 2. And this equals 0. And so each factor can equal 0, leading to m equals minus 3, or m equals minus 2. So we've got two real roots here. And that means that our solution for the complementary function, CF then, is essentially going to be x equals, and it'll be a constant, which I'll call a, and it'll be e to the power minus 3t for this one, plus another constant, which I'll call b, and then it'll be e to the power minus 2t. All right? So there's our complementary function. Next we need to look at working out the particular integral. So I'll just put here for pi for short, the particular integral. Now for the particular integral, what I'm going to do is suggest then a solution that's got this kind of format here. So I'm going to say let x equal, let's say, a constant which we'll call, let's say, alpha. And we've got cos t plus another constant, which I'll call beta, say, and that will be sine t. So it's taking on a similar format to that. And as usual, when we get something like this, we need to differentiate this to find dx by dt. And we also need to, again, go on to differentiate to get d2x by dt squared. So if we differentiate this, first of all, with respect to t, we've got, therefore, dx by dt equals, and then we're going to have for this first term, minus alpha sine t. And then for this next term, it's going to be plus beta cos t. I also need to differentiate dx by dt again with respect to t, so it's going to give me d2x by dt squared. And if I do that, for this term, I'm going to get minus alpha cos t. And for this term here, it's going to be minus beta sine t. Now, we're going to take these three equations and going to substitute them into our top equation here. Let's just call this one and we'll call these equations 2, 3 and 4. All right? And so what we're going to need to do then is if we just come down here, section that off, is to simply substitute, we'll put it here, sub equation 2, 3 and 4 into equation 1. Now, if we do that, we're therefore going to have, well, for d2x per dt squared, we've got this one here, so we've got minus alpha cos t minus beta sine t. 
Okay, so that's the first one. Now we've got five times dx by dt. So if I multiply this one here by five, we're going to end up with minus five alpha sine t, and then plus five beta cos t, five beta cos t. And you can see I haven't got much room here, so I'm gonna to have to put it down the next line. Then we've got plus six times x. So if we multiply x by six, we've got plus six alpha cos t, and then plus six beta sine t. And we're told that all of this equals two cos t minus sine t. So equals two cos t minus sine t. Now I've got to work out what alpha and beta are. And to do this, what I need to do is just compare the coefficients of say cos t, first of all, and then sine t. So if I compare the coefficients of cos t, what we've got is minus alpha here, plus the five beta, plus the six alpha, equals the two. So I can see then that we've got six alpha minus alpha, so that's gonna be five alpha. And then we've got the five beta there, and that's going to equal the two that we have here. So that's one equation. We'll number this equation, say five, okay? And we can do the same thing again for sine t. If we look at the coefficients of sine t, we've got minus beta here, and we've got plus six beta there. So that's going to be five beta. And what else have we got? We've got a coefficient of minus five alpha. So let's just put minus five alpha there. That's all our coefficients on the left-hand side for sine t. On the right-hand side, we've got negative one. So this must equal minus one. And we'll number this equation six. So we can easily get alpha and beta from these two simultaneous equations. We can say, add the two equations together, five plus six. If we do five plus six, what we have is the alpha terms cancel out and we've got 10 beta equals one. So 10 beta equals one, and that leads on to beta equaling one tenth. We can also work out what alpha is now by subtracting the two equations. If we do equation five, minus equation six. That is going to give us five alpha minus minus five alpha, that's gonna be 10 alpha, equals two minus minus one, which is three. And from here, alpha must equal three tenths. So therefore, what we've got is our particular integral, pi. Our particular integral is basically going to be x equals alpha, cos t, so alpha is 3 tenths, so we've got 3 tenths cos t, and then plus beta sine t. Beta is 1 tenth, so it's plus 1 tenth sine t. Now when it comes to the general solution, therefore the general solution, put that as gs, the general solution is x equals the complementary function, cf plus the particular integral. So if we put those two together, we end up with x equaling the complementary function, which is here, a e to the power minus 3t plus b e to the power minus 2t, and then plus the particular integral, which is the 3 tenths cosine t cos t plus 1 tenth sine t. All right.